Hello there folks and welcome to another tale from the Wood Library. Now today I'm going to cheat a little bit because I'm not using found timber. I'm using timber that I actually paid for. So I went down to uh, the local store here, Bunnings, and bought a bunch of this. This is uh, Tasmanian oak. Uh, it's a relatively inexpensive hardwood. It's pretty nice. Uh, it actually scrubs up quite nicely. Uh, 65 mil by 20 mil by 1.8 meters. Now the project is to make an easel. Why would I want to make an easel, I hear you ask? Well, very simply because I've decided to try and teach myself during the ongoing COVID lockdown uh, some uh, degree of um, advance with watercolours. So I, I used to do watercolours years and years ago and gave it up because it wasn't very good. Uh, and I'm telling myself now that it's because I don't have a proper easel. Don't want to buy one, don't want to spend $200 on one. So I thought uh, 70 or $80 worth of Tasmanian oak would do. So I've started off by laying uh, the typical A-frame out on this board here and I've got the baseline uh, clamped with this uh, uh, metal rod here, this metal ruler, and I've got it taped off on the top end here. And I've measured it all up and uh, the next stage really is to uh, trim a little bit off the bottom two struts here so that when it's placed on the ground it actually sits level and just doesn't balance on one edge. So that's the first job. Uh, the second job, of course, is go up to the top end and do the same up here, which I've marked up. And uh, then I'm going to measure out two cross pieces, which is one's going to go across here, and one at the top there, uh, in order to hold this central riser, which will be adjustable, uh, so that I can push the canvas or the paper, in this case, uh, the watercolour paper, higher or lower, depending on my requirements. Uh, let's see how it goes. Working out the exact angle required for the A-frame when it's sitting on the floor was a little bit beyond me. So essentially, as you saw, I laid it out on the table and then put a, a cross piece across and then just measured it and just put a drew a line. So it actually works out looking on the scale on my, on my saw here at being seven degrees. Uh, so it's just a random seven degrees. And the point of this, of course, is if I don't do that, it's just gonna sit on the heel of the timber here or the inside. Uh, and it's going to skate around on the parquetry, which is what we have in the house. So it's going to be uh, A, very unstable, and B, it's probably going to mark, and C, why bother doing it anyway. So I've got to do it properly. Uh, and the idea being is if I take about seven degrees off uh, the left and the right, top and the bottom, uh, I can actually put rubber pads or rubber bungies on the bottom as well, just to give it a bit of extra stability. Let's see how we go. <laughs> There you go. So it's not much, it's just a tiny little wedge there, but um, hopefully that's going to make all the difference. Okay, just to make absolutely sure that I've got my measurements correct, what I've done is I'm just going to saw down the length here. I've got the one that I've already cut here, and I'm going to use that as a template, just in case my measurements are slightly out, so that at least I know both lengths of timber are going to be exactly the same length. It's kind of important. The point of showing you that, of course, is even though I might be buying 1.8 metre lengths, uh, this one was clearly 10 mil longer than the first one I did. So they're different lengths, they're different uh, uneven dimensions, so it's worth checking. The next part of the uh, project is to put the top and lower brace on. So this is going to be a little bit uh, flying by the seat of my pants, I suppose. Uh, I'm just measuring at the top here and I'm thinking, well, I need to cut it a little bit oversized and then put it on here and actually measure again, going back to my inability to measure things properly. Um, it's much better if I lay it on top of the frame here and then just mark it with a pencil so I can cut it at an angle so that it fits nice and smooth and flush with the side and doesn't stick out with a sort of ugly off-cut look. So it looks to me right up the top here to be about 510 and moving it down here a little bit, I'm probably going to mount it down here somewhere, so that's about 540. Uh, 500 okay so maybe I'll cut it at, at about 56 centimeters put it on it and then re-measure it and cut it so that it fits exactly okay so here goes just going to cut this little cross member it's going to be oversized so that I can then measure it correctly once in place bring it back onto the saw and cut it at a suitable angle So 
So now I've got uh, both my cross pieces laid over the uh, three uh, long stretches of Tessie oak that make up the A-frame. You can see here's the bottom one that stops at 450 from the floor. And then if I just swing the camera around, you'll be able to see the top one. And uh, you can see that it's grossly over cut. We've got far too much timber there. I'm just going to measure that and trim it down so that when it's screwed onto the frame on the outer sides, the left and right outer sides, it's going to be flush with the edges and look much nicer. So here we are cutting the cross pieces. I'm just going to get the angle dead on. Again, the angle is going to be slightly different to the angle cut on the feet. that so the next stage is a very simple bit of arithmetic so I want to do a little bit of finishing on the three uprights uh, by rounding the tops off and <laughs> I find one of the easiest ways is to find something that's round that's pretty much matches the width of the timber you're doing it on place it on there and then just mark it up like that so it gives me something to go with uh, when I'm using the jigsaw like that now it's got it marked out quite nicely and of course uh, I'll jigsaw that out and then sand it and we've got three the same So for this next stage, I've decided not to use the um, jigsaw as it's a little bit rough and I thought I'd use uh, a saw like this. It's my latest toy, a Japanese saw, just a hand saw. And you find it's a lot easier to control, uh, it's a lot simpler and uh, <laughs> hopefully it's going to be a little bit neater than the, than the uh, jigsaw. <laughs> I guess uh, it's pretty obvious the next stage is to try and smooth out my rather lumpy cutting technique to cut a semicircular or rounded tip to the three uh, uprights. And we're going to use uh, this uh, 40 grit sandpaper, see how we go. So that looks like, pretty much looks like it's going to do a fairly good job. Uh, let's see uh, what it looks like when we're finished. So the next step, of course, is to countersink uh, for the screws. And I uh, have to be a little bit careful here because we've got 20mm uh, Tassie oak. And so when I'm screwing these together, it's effectively 40mm. And uh, I can't use 40mm screws because, as Murphy's Law says, they will actually poke out underneath. And 30mm, which is what I've got, is a little bit on the short side. So I'm going to make a fairly deep countersink uh, just to give myself a little bit of extra grip as the screw goes through. So... I guess something like that, it's a, it's a little bit more than I would normally do, uh, but as I say, it'll give uh, the 30mm screws a little bit more bite and structural strength. Well, here's and of course, uh, because it's hardwood, um, I'm going to pre-drill these uh, back panels simply to avoid uh, the risk or taking the risk of the uh, tazzy timber from splitting. So you never quite know how, how old the timber is, how dry it is, when you buy it from one of these uh, commercial timber yards or commercial uh, do-it-yourself shops. So it's always good to take that into, uh, take the precaution. Let's try it.
So that seems to work quite nicely. As you can see, they're fairly deep countersink holes, uh, and that means hopefully the uh, the slightly shorter than necessary screws are going to poke through. And one thing I have learned um, from experience, bitter experience, of course, uh, is when you do this, of course, there's a bit of splitting and burst out uh, on the other side. And it's a really good idea to get your sander, or just you know rubbing it here, but get your sander and give it a good a good polish over, just to remove all these tiny little bits, and that helps. Of course, the timber, when it's being screwed together, to fit flush onto the surface it's being screwed into. If it's got a little bit of chipped timber split out still underneath there, you're never going to get a really clean, really good uh, glued and screwed finish. So this is pretty much uh, what it's going to look like, hopefully, when it's all screwed together. I clamped it up and you can see it, they're nicely rounded on the facing uh, verticals there, or they're not verticals, on the facing lengths, right up to the ceiling. It's quite a tall easel. I suppose I'm over six foot, so it needs to be fairly tall. And uh, it's a good idea yeah, just to do this to make sure that it's all going to fit and that the angles I've cut on those cross pieces uh, are nice and flush with the edges either side. And I'm pleased to see that the uh, angles cut on the feet as well match uh, the angle once standing up so there's no room underneath there and they'll, they'll sit nicely on the floor. Now one little tip that I'm sure everybody knows about which is something I kind of worked out for myself over the years is is I tend to be a bit messy when I'm doing the lineup and you can see here I've actually changed the position a couple of times. So I've got a couple of lineups uh, penciled in here. But I've already put a single screw in there, and as you can see, I've taken that out, and if I move it around, there's the sort of pilot hole. So I know that I can come back and get this cross piece lined up perfectly based on that. The trick really is to sand some of these markups, this pencil in the area here, because what typically happens is you screw it all down, get it all glued, and then you think, well, I'm just going to varnish it or treat the wood, and you end up by having little bits of pencil mark which are, can no longer be removed because they're covered in varnish or oil. So it's a nice thing just to clean up, get all the pencil marks, you can use a rubber or a sander to get rid of it and then screw them down with the glue. Now one thing that I was hoping was going to be okay was uh, the ability to put my, my little three screw hinge on the back of the easel like that and not have it interfere with the screws that are actually holding uh, the centerpiece up. And so luckily I think I can get away with it. Otherwise I would have had to put uh, an extra block in probably down here like that and uh, put the hinge onto that, uh, which is, which is uh, quite possible as well. But I think I'll try and get away with it by putting it in here. Let's have a look and see how that goes. We've got it all marked up there. There we go, nice, nice and square. And this bad boy is going to go in there. So that just goes straight in. And uh, put a second one in. Marvellous. So it doesn't really have to bear any, any sort of weight. It's not weight bearing at all. It's just uh, as a pivot for that, that back support, that back stand part. There we go. And now we just need to attach that back stand to it and we're, we're almost, almost good to go. So there's the hinge now, we've got that in place. So we're pretty much good to go to stand up. The next thing we have to do is the adjustable risers that can be uh, shifted up or down top and bottom to accommodate different size canvases or drawing boards or whatever I'm using. So the next stage is to cut four short pieces based on the size of that and use these as clamps to hold the shelf and therefore the canvases in place. Well that's the idea anyway. So now we've got four blocks as you can see here um, and these are going to be used as clamps, two per clamp. Uh, to make them look a little bit more attractive I'm going to round off the bottom corner on all four. Uh, so that in profile, when they're actually uh, screwed onto the easel, they look a little bit uh, nicer than just the timber.
as is always the case when you're doing any kind of carpentry job, well, this is what my experience tells me anyway. In fact, it doesn't really matter. It could be a gardening job. It could be any kind of maintenance. You do something and then you sort of talk to somebody or you read something or you look it up on the internet. You find there's probably an easy way of doing it or a cheaper way or both. Uh, and uh, I've kind of just hit that here. This is um, the back panel um, that is going to become part of the adjustable shelf to hold uh, the canvas or the drawing board in place. And it's going to be held onto the main strut, the central strut on the easel with uh, two 75 millimeter stainless bolts that go through here. Uh, and the idea being is I need to cut out uh, probably five mil uh, recess in that just so it holds it uh, in place on that central column, it doesn't have to be too deep. And of course I've left it too late because I've cut this out and I've rounded it off now and of course it's very dangerous to push this backwards and forwards through the through the saw there. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw it, uh, drill it and then screw it onto a piece of scrap timber and do it like that on the um, on the saw and we'll see how we go. So now that we've got this little um, rebate cut out of one of the two parts of the clamp, this is actually going to be the back part, uh, we want to drill through there so that we can actually uh, put the bolt all the way through like that and so that it registers nicely with the front part. But of course it's going to be in real life it's going to be like that from the front but because I've already got little holes drilled in here I'm just going to drop uh, this drill bit straight through just make a slight adjustment to that and it should be good to go. Okay, it's looking nice. So I'm just going to put this in here. There we go. So I've now just got the bolt in position there just to hold it in register when I put in the second drill hole. to go. All I need to do is swap it around. So this now becomes the front and pop a couple of butterfly nuts onto the back and we'll be, uh, we'll be ready for action. So this is pretty much what uh, the finished product is going to look like. I'm going to sand around here a little bit just to make it a bit smoother, a bit more attractive. And I did make a mistake in the bolts that I bought. Don't have, I don't know what you call them, but they have like a little, little uh, indent in the back of them so you can punch them into timber to prevent them doing this. So when I tighten up the butterfly nuts at the back they do tend to spin around a little bit but I can just put a coin or a, a screwdriver in there and tighten it up. I don't envisage uh, raising and lowering these stops very much. And as you can see they go up and down really nicely. Uh, it needs a final sanding of course which means it'll be a little bit smoother in operation. And the final thing to do of course is to put some form of a shelf on here such as this uh, that can support the board or the canvas or whatever I'm using, uh, plus also maybe brushes uh, and uh, maybe even a bottle of water, a jar of water or something like that. And we're all done.
Okay, so here's the moment of truth. Here's the shelf. And I'm just going to put the bolt through there on the back section, locate that. We've got a nylon, nylon washer to put on. And then, of course, a butterfly nut. The, the bolts are actually probably about 10 mil too long because that's the only ones the store that had. The store had, but you know, because that's fine. We can, we can probably chop them down later if I wanted to, but they're not in the way there unless I try and collapse and lay this easel flat on its back. It's, it's not going to be a problem. And there we have it. So here we have the final touch, I suppose. We've got um, two pieces here uh, acting as shelves, essentially, but also to hold up or restrain the canvas or the drawing board. Uh, as we go slide up and down, just losing, loosening the, the two butterfly nuts behind here. That seems to work quite nicely. Let's just push it down a little bit and tighten them up. So uh, my only regret is, uh, is, is the bolts that I got here are just flat bolts. They're flat heads. They don't have that little recessed cross in the back of it, which you normally hammer into the timber to avoid the nut from just turning and turning. But uh, as it is, you know, you can see that it's, it's pretty straightforward here. And it takes a couple of twists. The thing doesn't have to be uh, rock solid because it's not supporting a huge weight. Uh, but other than that, I'm pretty pleased with it. Uh, the only other thing to do is to include a piece of string between the, the bottom section and the back, the support, just to make sure that it doesn't go flying uh, on a slippery floor. And then we're done.